Hey everybody, welcome back again. We've got a fun little project today. We're gonna to be combining a lot of the knowledge that we've already used in previous lessons all together to create a word stencil. Today. When they're 3D printed, you'll see that they're actually a little bit flexible. So we're gonna be controlling and getting specific measurements like we've done in a previous lesson. We're also gonna be combining and grouping shapes to create holes as well. So those are the couple of tricks that we're gonna be using from previous lessons. But we're gonna add in how to align objects and make sure that they get centered today, as well as look at some of the other tools that we have available in Tinkercad. So let's get started. All right, so I have a work plane already set up here with an example of what we're gonna to create today, and that is a letter word stencil. You can choose anything that you want to today. It could be a name, an object, a name of a movie, uh, music, lyric, anything that you want to. The only limitation that I'll set on it is we probably don't want too many characters. So probably 10 or less characters when we're gonna get started. So I'm gonna select and delete this one out. Uh, we'll get the same kind of result when we're finished. So first move is let's bring a box onto the work plane, just a simple box. We're taking out of the Tinkercad basic shapes, grab a simple box, and we wanna set this at a specific height. Now our specific height, there's a couple of ways that you can get this done. Remember this top one here, uh, the top little anchor point, if I click and drag on that, we can set specific heights. What I wanna do is get this down to about four millimeters. Okay, four millimeters. Now, if you have converted to inches, what you wanna to go to is about one eighth of an inch. Um, now, keep in mind, there's another way that we can get that done. If you click in the box, click in the numbers, we can type in a number and click enter and it will get us there right away. Okay, so now one of the things that we haven't spent a lot of time on is looking at all of the different things that we can get in this little window. Right now, we're in Tinkercad basic shapes. Um, but as we click through that, what I want you to notice is there's tons and tons of different things that we can check into here. Um, and these are all a little bit more complicated shapes that we can dive into. So if I click on characters, what you're going to notice is we have 3D objects that we can use and combine and creating little characters for ourselves in Tinkercad. Um, that's super cool. When I click this again, You'll notice that we have an entire shape library up there, um, but where we're actually going to head today is going to be into what's called all shape generators right there. Okay, so shape generators, and I want you to click on all. Now, again, in the shape generators, as you scroll through this, you're going to see lots and lots of different 3D objects that you can bring onto the work plane, and all of these can be manipulated the same way that we've been manipulating all of our shapes up to this point. Changing scale, um, changing color if we want to, turning them into holes, anything, all of the manipulations we've learned are possible for all of these shapes. As you scroll all the way down to the bottom, what I want you to notice is we have tons and tons of pages here that we can source materials from. Um, what we want is from page two. Okay, so if you click on page two, um, we've got stairs, and then we've got a lot of different text tools, some that will um, work on uh, building the text into rings and things like that, um, actually following the three dimensions of, of different things that we put onto the work plane. We have a Braille generator. How cool is that? QR code generator. Um, but the one that we're looking for today is the script tool. Now, the script tool, this is essential that we use this for a stencil because what you'll know from our original text tool back over here in Basic Shapes, we do have a text tool available, but in that text tool, there are only a couple of different fonts available. We have four fonts there. Um, so I'm going to get that one back off of my work plane. I don't want that one there. When I click on the script tool and I click on the fonts here, you'll notice that there are lots more, not tons, but there are lots more available, about eight different fonts available to us. So what we'll do with this then is we want to put in a word and think about the word that you want to use. This could be anything, right? It could be your name. It could be someone else's name. It could be the name of your favorite movie, your favorite song title. It could be a place that you visited. It literally could be anything like maybe adjectives or just general good feeling words like love, peace, beauty, things like that. Think about what you want to do for your word. The word I'm going to use today is just going to be um, uh, my YouTube channel name. So uh, we're going to go love art. Okay. Now, with love art, if we look at this here, um, we have a problem with this text as it stands out. Um, as I scroll into this, what I'm going to show you is that there are spaces and gaps in between this. And so that's a problem for designing a stencil. Um, I'll show you a couple of images here on why that's a problem. Okay, so what we have is the creation of islands. That's what I call these little spaces in between here. So anywhere that there's a red arrow going down, you'll notice that there's a little space here that is not connected to anything. And if we were to print this uh, in terms of a 3D print, you would find that these pieces, these islands would literally break out. 
Here's a stencil that was made using the incorrect font. And what you'll notice is all of these spaces are open because they were not connected. Now we still have that flexibility. That flexibility is found by getting the four millimeter height that we set on the box, but we need to use a very specific font to make sure that our words turn out correctly. So um, here is what it looks like when we use a specific font. Here we have the bridges going across it that make all of this connected. So the space in the A would not vanish, the space in the B, the space in the A. So none of these would vanish. This is exactly what we want. So let's get back into our design. Um, I have Love Art here, and there's actually two different fonts that will work for this. We can choose this one here that's called Major Snafu. Um, and normally it takes a second for it to load, but once you've selected it, it will change it, and there it is. Uh, it shows you exactly what it looks like then. And what you'll notice is we have these little gaps in between here, and that will make sure that everything is printed together. Now the other uh, font that you could use is called Stencil. So the Stencil font will also work for this project. Um, so I, I think I'm going to stick with Major Snafu, so I'm going to scroll back up and click on Major Snafu. So now we just have to format these things together. So what I'm going to do to get started then is I'm going to bring my box right over just a little bit to the left of where my letters are. And using one of these anchor points on the corners, I'm going to click and drag this out to make sure that I can see it, that it is uh, tall enough and wide enough to hold my entire word. Now I'm going to click and bring that word right into the box. Now, here's a little trick now to just make sure that everything gets centered perfectly onto your design. And this is a brand new tool, something that we haven't looked at yet before. Um, it's called the Align Tool. Now, the Align Tool is found right up top here, right next to where we have Ungroup and Group that we were talking about in the last lesson. This one right here, Align Tool. Now, you'll notice that it's grayed out because I only have one thing selected. So what we have to do is make sure that we get multiple objects selected. So we can just draw a box and make sure that we have the box itself and the text are selected. And now you notice that I can use the Align Tool. When I click on the Align Tool, it gives us brand new anchor points, things that we've never seen before. And what these will do will help you align these objects together. So you could align them at the top. You can see a little ghost of it goes when I hover over it. You can align them at the bottom. You can align them to the left, or you can align them to the right. Um, what I want to do, though, is get it centered. So I'm going to click on this one here, make sure that it's centered there, and then it's centered top and bottom. But this little trick I use in every single design that I create, making sure that I have everything centered really well. Okay, so now the next thing that we're going to do, I have everything selected right now. I'm going to deselect by clicking the work plane out here and reselect the text only. When I reselect the text only, I'm going to increase the height. Now, this is an arbitrary measurement. I don't need to have a specific measurement of any kind. It could be anything here. It could be 34, 35, whatever. It doesn't matter. It could be as tall as you want to because we're going to take and actually make this a hole in just a minute. Um, so I'm going to make sure that it gets up a little bit taller. Now, using this black triangle. Now, this black triangle up here only controls vertical movements of that object. It won't allow it to go side to side or this way or that way. It's just going to control its vertical movements. And so what I'm going to do is click there, drag it down so that I can see it both above and below the box. Okay, both above and below the box. Now, once I can see that happening, I still have only my text selected. And what I want to do with it then is select it as a whole. Now, what you've learned in the previous lesson is when we do this as a whole, it makes it look transparent, but there's actually no opening to it yet. Um, so the final step in getting this done is we need to group these things together. And again, while I have only the text selected, I don't have the option to group. So remember, anytime that we're grouping, we have to have multiple objects selected. So I'm going to make sure that I have the box and the letters selected. And then I'm going to click. I have it now. It's dark. I can do it. I'm going to click on group. And normally this also takes a moment for it to happen. But when it's finished, it will create a, a opening going all the way through the box. And there it is. Now we have our opening going all the way through the box, and this is the result that we were looking for. Great fun project. Super easy to create on Tinkercad, and then they take barely any time to print on your 3D printer. Most stencils, depending on the size that you use, are going to print in under an hour. A simple fun project. These are really quick and easy to print, and then they're highly versatile. You can even bend these around curved objects to be able to stencil things on with an airbrush, spray paint, maybe a pencil or a marker. Um, have a little bit of fun with this. Choose a word that you want, make it an adjective, make it a name, make it a place, whatever it is that you want to make your result, and you get a little word stencil out of this project. Have a little fun with that. Thanks for joining me today, and we'll see you next time. 
And don't forget that we're going to keep this going in the next lesson. We're going to look at how to use images like that for stencil work as well. So super cool stuff ahead of us. Have a little bit of fun with this one, and I'll see you in the next lesson.